So I've been working on the Hebrews transcriptions and editing the messages and having fresh realizations. That message series was so good um, that I almost forgot everything that got said during it. I mean, it was just, there was so much. And one of the things I'm seeing, though, again and again and again, is that the difference between milk and meat in uh, Hebrews, especially, is that milk has to do with reestablish going back when you're on milk when you go back to milk you're always going back and reestablishing the basics of how do i get saved am i really saved what is repentance you know did did i do that um am i secure you know the basics but meat we think see we we think okay you get that established and then you need to go on to good works you need to go on to discipleship you need to go on to sanctification and growth and it's funny because the people that we when, when we tend to say those things we're actually void of a lot of revelation <laughs> meat in hebrews is going on to the full assurance that christ has taken care of everything and that everything rests on his shoulders and this is based on his high priesthood in which he is as the high priest at the order of melchizedek he is within the veil as the forerunner right in the holiest of all where he has established our spirit and is joined to our spirit so we are there too you are no longer in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you we are in Christ and we are in the Holy of Holies in our spirit when we are regenerated. But our soul staggers between, on the one hand, believing that Christ did everything, on the other hand, believing, no, there's something else for me to do. And that staggering is why our soul needs an anchor to bring it within the veil to be saturated with Christ, the presence of Christ, and the rest of Christ. In the Holy of Holies, there is nothing to do. There is only the high priest and the blood speaking and the presence of God. There's nothing left to do. Outside the Holy of Holies, there was the holy place with the washings and the showbread and the... Uh, incense altar and the candle uh stick right um that required continual maintenance to keep the light going keep the bread ref refreshed keep the prayers going up to the incense altar and then outside is the outer court with the continual sacrifices and the continual washing at the labor all of those things are carnal ordinances that were imposed as a picture and a shadow to show us what religious self-keeping and self-maintenance looks like. And as long as all those activities are going on, it showed that the way into the holiest was not yet manifested. So while these guys were all do, the priests were all doing all this service one day a year, a more fancy priest, a high priest who was dressed better, carried blood past them all while they were doing all this religious works and went into the holiest of all, presented that blood on the propitiation seat, and then the Spirit of God came down. And they didn't see any of it. All they saw was this guy who was dressed better than them walk past them and go into the holiest and disappear. They had no idea what was going on back there, really. I mean, in principle. And Hebrews tells us that as long as these outward activities are going on in the holy place and in the outer court, it shows us that there's t still a time of reformation needed, that this system can't perfect you, and that uh, the way into the holiest of all has not yet been made manifest. And all of this was a figure to show us what we do what we do in our soul life. See, when we're regenerated, our spirit is in the holiest of all, but our mind, will, and emotions, and our personality struggles to get in there and rest. 
As long as we are continuing activities in our flesh to try to maintain ourself, our own enlightenment, our own spiritual condition, we are in the uh, we are in the struggle depicted by the picture in the holy place and in the outer court. And Hebrew says, as long as that whole thing exists, the way into the holiest of all has not yet been made up, manifest. Now, the way into the holiest of all in Hebrews is like a, is a picture uh, associated with the holiest of all, the Spirit of God, and the good land, and our and the Sabbath rest, and Christ Himself. So on the one hand, we're to enter into Christ as our rest. On the other hand, we are to partake of Christ. On the other hand, we are supposed to cease from all our works. All of that is tied up with the high priesthood of Christ. And he was established with an oath. Uh, God has sworn and will not repent that he is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek forever. And that oath produces a living hope. And this living hope is an anchor for our soul that enters within the presence within the veil. There is an anchor in, the imagi in my imagination. I see that uh, there's like a big heavy anchor tied to, wrapped around the Ark of the Covenant in the holiest of all, right? And that's where my spirit is. But my soul is like a kite tied to that anchor. And there's a string going out the holy holiest of all into the holy place. And there's this kite flapping in the wind between the holy place and the whole and the outer court, going back and forth and tossed to and fro by the winds. Those winds, that kite represents my soul, and the wind represents being buffeted by all these considerations and contradictions that turn me to myself and say, yeah, but you have to do something. Okay? So as long as I'm out there, I'm not enjoying the presence of God. I'm not in the rest. I'm not partaking of Christ, even if I'm regenerated. Hebrews is a book of experience to bring you into the presence within the veil so that you cease from your own works and the another and partake of Christ and enjoy him. And another way that Hebrews refers to this is the full assurance of faith. We are to be diligent to enter the full assurance of faith. We are to be enter, diligent to enter into the rest and partake of Christ. How do we do this? Through faith. In what? In Christ as our high priest. This doctrine of Christ as our high priest, Christ as the one and the holiest of all, him wanting to bring us in to rest with him, our need to cease from our own struggling and striving, our realization that as long as that struggle and striving is going on, it just shows that the way to the holiest of all has not yet been made manifested to me, uh, and that I have an anchor in the holiest of all that's to draw my soul within the veil into the presence of God. So Hebrews is about getting what you need to finally rest in the presence of God and experience it in your soul while you're on this earth. That is is the meat. So the milk is, how do I know I'm saved? The meat is, how fully assured are you that this is really in Christ's hands and nothing is required of you? That's the meat of the word. A lot of people think, no, the meat of the word is discipleship and getting on to get, get busy, get working, like pastor so-and-so. No, the meat of the word is the full assurance of faith. That we are to enter into Christ and enjoy him and partake of him as our good land, which is our rest and our Sabbath. And that this is in the holiest of all where there is no labor that can be done. There are no works that can be done in there. The only one allowed to do anything is God himself. In a way, it is the tomb. It's the tomb. Because in there, there's no human activity. We are dead when we pass through the veil. And that veil represents his flesh. In his own, the body of his own flesh, he made a new and living way for us that enters into the presence within the veil. Hebrews is all about entering into the presence, bringing our soul into the presence. The more, the way to get into the presence of God in your soul, your mind, will, and your emotions, and be affected by it and be filled with the Spirit, is to come into full assurance of faith. Nothing else. 
And that is our labor, is to see from the word until all the questions are answered and all the winds have died down. And that anchor, the living hope, has brought our soul in and now we're resting in Jesus. That is Christian maturity. So Christian maturity isn't that much different from the foundation. We learned in justification that, and, and this is what we would call sanctification, by the way. Hebrews is about sanctification. Sanctification is not becoming a better person. Sanctification is resting in Christ within the veil and being brought in and having your soul settled down in him and enjoying him as your pasture in your good land and having no works of your own, but resting in the finished works of Christ. And then... He is the one working. He begins to work. He picks up where you leave off. And um, that is sanctification. Justification is, I believe that I couldn't save myself. Jesus had to save me. He shed his blood for me, and I'm, now I'm forgiven. But that is not the ground to get busy and get to work. That is the ground, that is the ground of faith. And now you need to pursue the full assurance of faith, to become fully assured that what God has promised he's able to bring about, which is nothing less than Christ living in you, Christ being your life, Christ being your righteousness and your sanctification in experience. That's the meat of the word. That's what the meat of the word points to. Um, so I just thought I'd point this out as I'm going through this. It's kind of edifying. <laughs>